You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. You want to call it Satan? You want to call it the devil? You want to call it a Satanist? You want to call it whatever? They believe in that shit. So do we really know what history is? Or have we been fed a story from a propaganda machine that we've never been able to question up until this point in humanity? Everything media, everything that you see on the media is to either make you feel fear, shame, or insecure. Why the fuck don't we know who Ghislaine Maxwell and Epstein traffic children to? That don't make any sense. She got fucking sentenced and we don't have any idea who the fuck is on the list. What are we talking about? That's insane. That's insanity. And some of these people might be in our government. Nah, they're not ruling over me. Fuck you. You don't get to call me a domestic terrorist, especially after you closed businesses for the last three and a half years to tell us it was all bullshit. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got MMA fighter, Joe King Bois. How do you, how do you, is it Bowman or Bo? Yeah, so, so, it's a play on words. I'm, uh, I do music, right? Mm. And uh, my music name is Canada Bowman. So it's Bowman, right? So the whole thing is, you know, my name in your mouth, whisper it, because you ain't worthy to say it aloud. That used to be like my old music tag. I used to whisper my name, right? Uh-huh. And it was because I'm a king. Bow, man. Don't you hear the name of a king? Long as my name in your mouth, it keeps making me things. So it's just a play on words. Yeah. The man who's stepped forward to expose Hollywood, like you haven't fucked around here. Like, massive respect for that, brother. There's not many people who's got the bottle to do that because when you step to the forefront, you are willing to be hung out to dry, losing financial gain, losing popularity, losing views, losing everything that comes with step going against the grain and calling out the big wigs. Um, it's not easy, but you're doing it. Many other people have done it in the past. Um, but massive respect for that, brother. I think that it's I think that the the consciousness is shifting, meaning you you talked about how a lot of people have been cancelled before and how a lot of people have been almost deplatformed. De- 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 I mean, let's just call it what it is, deplatformed. And it's funny how I'm gaining a platform. I'm gaining a platform for all of it. Because I think truth is what people are wanting to focus on. Truth is, we're stepping into a time where consciousness is shifting. You know, what made me actually decide to to respond immediately to you was I saw you interviewed David Icke. And I hadn't seen any of your work before that, but I, I saw that you did David Icke and I was just like, that's, he gets it. If he has David Icke on his platform, he must understand something. You understand? Yeah. That means that consciousness and everyone is craving this certain energy, this certain truth, this certain topic, the topics that are being, they're ready for it. The world is ready for change. Yeah, it's like, there's always a sicky feeling that something's just not quite right in this world. There's always something I miss. I don't know if that's, I can speak for everyone, but I can only speak for myself. There's always something within me that it just doesn't feel right. I don't know what it is. I don't have all the answers. I can only speak from experience. I can only speak from my experience from the past of being fucked up and a lost soul and I've kind of gained it back I've kind of raised my frequency and my energy to see the world a bit differently where I'm not scared anymore to speak how I feel because I believe we're living in a society where everyone's afraid and if you're full of fear then you ain't going to come forward and speak how you feel and that's what I believe you can create change is speaking how you feel we don't have all the answers you don't have the answers I don't have the answers but all we can do is do some research and go with our intuition, our gut feeling, what our soul tells us, which is, I believe, is the most important thing in life. But before we get into all the dark stuff, brother, I always go back to the start of my guests to get a bit of understanding about them, where you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, so I was adopted. I grew up on a farm. My mother chose the parents that I have now to raise me. 
out of hundreds of hundreds of different applications. She was a single um, African American woman in America with two other kids before me. My father left her when she was pregnant, so I was adopted at two weeks old. Grew up in a small farming community in a state called Minnesota. Um, kind of bumfuck nowhere, right? There's nothing uh, to really do out there. Um, so yeah, I, I got good at sports. Uh, ended up wrestling at the University of Minnesota, one of the number one teams in the nation. When I got there, um, my dad actually told me that I might have to stop doing music because I was always doing music when I was a kid. And he said that the NCAA owned the right to my name. And I never understood why that was the case. I was like, uh, wait a minute. So I can't make money off my name, but the NCAA can. I thought that was stupid. And I told him that if they ever came after me, they would just make me famous. Well, <laughs> I ended up giving my uh, scholarship uh, to pursue music. And I used that to kind of blow up in 2012. We were on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, The New York Times. We made international media uh, for being the kid that gave up his eligibility at one of the number one teams in the nation to pursue being sovereign, being my own individual, um, owning the name, owning the rights to my image. And now we look, we fast forward. That's what everybody's on. Nobody wants to be in a record label anymore. Now everybody, you know, wants to be a YouTuber. All these kids growing up want to be an influencer. Everybody wants to make money off of their likeness. Well, back in the day, that was a, a big issue. So that started my journey of sovereignty. I wanted to learn how to be free um, and just be my own entity. I got into direct sales shortly after that. I had suffered my, uh, I suffered a head injury that took me out. Continuing to go off. Let me shut this off. I, uh, long story short, suffered a head injury that took me out for three and a half months. I was told I never compete again within two and a half weeks of, uh, taking this product line that I am still on to this day. Uh, I was medically cleared to wrestle. And so long story short, my company's technology, uh, the one that I talk about where we feed children, has an all-natural anti-inflammatory called Limitless. Limitless is derived from Betalin. Betalin lowers the anti-inflammatory properties, or our product lowers the anti-inflammatory properties, inflammatory markers in a human by 47% in 90 minutes. Uh, so we have the patent to extract Betalin from the sugar molecule. So we just do food technology. Well, two and a half weeks later, like I said, I was medically cleared to wrestle. We started to share this technology with other people. And at the early age of about 23, I didn't have to work for a couple of years because of how many people I had helped and how much residual income I was making. That's why network marketing is awesome. The more people that you help, the more money that you make. And we were changing lives and um, it allowed me to be an entrepreneur and have a different type of thinking. I uh, got into personal development, got into learning how to reprogram the mind. Why are you afraid of this? Why do you give a shit what people think? And uh, that's also when I got into music. I bought all my equipment that I you didn't taught myself how to make beats, how to I was going to the studio, taking all the money that I was making network marketing, trying to get an education from one of my uh, from my audio engineer. He used to be signed with the Black Eyed Peas um, as a rapper learned from their Grammy Award audio engineer, uh, Prince Boar, and then opened up his own studio in Minneapolis and is now one of the number one studios in Minnesota where I'm from and in the Midwest. So I just I just started to invest in me, man. I just invested in me. And that's why everybody sees King Bao now, but nobody knows the stories that it took to get here. They don't know that I at one point in time made a, I had a lot of money and then I lost it all. Nobody knows that I damn near had to sleep out of my car. Nobody knows that I, you know what I mean? When I started fighting, a lot of people don't know what has made this. They just see the fierce warrior. They see the fearless person, but I've lost everything. That's why I'm not afraid to lose everything again, because I know I can build it back. Perfect example of that is I lost my TikTok uh, a month ago at 54,000 as I was going viral, as we were climbing to 100K. Would have easily happened. The Jimmy Kimmel challenge, hashtag Jimmy Kimmel challenge that we've been doing was blowing up. One of my videos is blowing up and they obviously got me on my final strike on TikTok and took away 54K. Well, we're almost back at 30 in a month because people are going and they're looking for me now. So I feel like uh, I feel like that goes back to the energy thing that we're talking about is people feel energy and they want truth. They want authenticity. 
They can't have Jimmy Kimmel sitting here acting like fentanyl is not a big deal and saying dumb shit. They can't have the media lie to them anymore and just say, hey, don't believe your eyes. This over here is is what's happening. Wait a minute. Uh, This is bullshit. Why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do this? Oh, wasn't it because there was some killer disease? Wasn't it because wasn't it because there was some killer epidemic going on? Oh, uh, no, nah, it looks like you're trying to take away our freedoms. More and more people are starting to wake up and it's it's just a beautiful time and I'm I'm right. grateful to be where I am. When did you lose your YouTube channel? Yeah, it only took me five months. Uh, I was doing I was just calling out shit like how I, I do. And I was also doing a thing on the Illuminati card game. I did uh, live presentations where I would take the Illuminati card game and show how literally it was almost on point with where we were at in humanity about three years ago. I was up in Minnesota when the George Floyd riots were taking when the George Floyd riots were taking place. I was in Minnesota saying, "Hey, this is going to be used to." push communism in the new world order agenda. I was going on live and just trying to warn people. I was saying, hey, those those bricks, the bricks that, that are panels, this is on the Illuminati card game. On the riot, there's a, a white man punching a, a cop. He has his little hippie bandana on. And in the back, there's bricks. There's bricks being thrown. And here we have George Soros bricks being placed in 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 the middle of the city and it's like wait a minute why are these bricks here <laughs> it's george soros don't touch the bricks if you see someone touch the bricks and start throwing it if you see that it's antifa it's 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 an inner operation don't do that dumb shit you're just going to be perpetuating what they want and lo and behold here we are three and a half fucking years later getting dog walked into what communism new world order Agenda 2020, whatever the fuck it is. I don't even give a fuck anymore. I don't want to pay attention to it. So, yeah, it didn't take long for me to use my YouTube channel. Long story short. How true is the Illuminati cards? Because I watched videos years ago, five years ago, maybe six years ago. There was like cards. They pull a card out every year. There was cards where airplanes were crashing into buildings. There was houses on fire. Like you say, there was people punching police. Like how true is that? Or is it something we create in our mind that we believe is a possibility that it's true? Or do you believe it's genuinely true that there is sick individuals out there who pick these cards out and turn the world upside down for their own weird personal fucking weirdness? I believe that they use that um as as programming, just like they do with the media. It's again, the universe is mental. So if I can get you to see this card game and go, it's, 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 it's perfect. If I can capture your attention and make you focus, wow, on these cards, are these cards really uh, potentially showing the future? Are they literally, you know, uh, allowing us to, if you give your attention and your energy to it, well, then it manifests. Think and grow rich, Napoleon Hill. Everybody knows that thoughts are things, right? Thoughts create reality. That's why they pump shit on the mainstream media to you. Everybody sits there and does the same thing. They sit there and they talk to you a certain way. And they give you and they give you information a certain way. And they tell stories a certain way. And they have tonality. They use tonality in a certain way. It's all hypnotic language. And in the same sense, I believe the cards are used almost as some people want to call it, if you want to call it magic, if you want to call it black magic, if you want to call it manifestation, it's a matter of gaining people's attention who perpetuate the reality that they want to create. Yeah. See, when you see things like The Simpsons and you go through some films back in the past from 20 years ago and it's predicting things from now, do you believe that's a thing also that they're leaving subliminal messages in these films for their own wickedness? Like, yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, the, doing the, things agenda, in front of our eyes. Their agenda. So I believe that we're run, that the world is run by uh, people who are not for humanity. I believe that you and myself are for humanity. And what I mean by for humanity is you want as many people to win as humanly possible with good in their heart that is giving back to humanity. You know, innately humans want to love. We just want peace. 
We want to be left alone to do what we want to do. And what I don't like to call them the elites. I am the elite. You are the elite. We are the elites. We are elite of heart and mind, right? They're not the elites anymore. So everybody needs to stop fucking saying, oh, the elites? No, they're fucking beta. To hurt someone lesser or to hurt someone at all is beta. That's not elite. So I believe that the betas uh, who are trying to, uh, who are in control of the illusion that has been perpetuated into our reality are not for humanity. They are for self. Now, there's a there's a flip side to this. You to have everything that I have to do everything that I'm doing and to do everything that you've done, you have to be somewhat of self. You have to love yourself enough to manifest and work hard to gain what it is that you want. These people, some of them have been born into royalty and look down or have been born into a position where they look down on others, where it's all malice, where it's all this, you know, disgust. And that is the energy of what's not for humanity. We don't look down. You don't look down at someone in Africa that doesn't have anything. You, I'm talking you, Jay. You don't look down at someone in Africa that has nothing and go, right? Well, one could argue potentially that that is what some of the people do that are in control of these systems. They're not living in their heart space. They're living in their ego, which is what's not for you. You want to call it Satan? You want to call it the devil? You want to call it a Satanist? You want to call it whatever? They believe in that shit. They believe in that shit. So, and they're doing things to perpetuate a reality where that can coexist in our own. So I don't think it's for, it's not necessarily of their own wickedness, but it is of their own wickedness. It's an agenda beyond that. It's what they're trying to bring into the now which is, I think, <laughs> Satan, the Antichrist, demons, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, this is essentially the end, The what some people would consider the end times. But to me, the end times, the ending, there's always a new beginning. So some people call it the Great Awakening, whatever you want. This is the shifting of consciousness back into heart space. Christ consciousness. I believe that Christ was an example of unconditional love. Unconditional love being that of living in your heart space, always forgiving. Notice how they try to cancel people like David Icke, Alex Jones, all these, myself, they want Andrew Tate, all these different people. They want to cancel and they don't want to forgive. It's not enough for Alex Jones to say, hey, uh, I, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I said this. Nope, we got to kill. We, we got to get up. We got to get them off. We got to off them. We got to get them out of here. That's not an innate human response. If someone shows, hum, if someone humbles themselves to hum, this is the great humbling. I believe that this isn't the great awakening. This is the great humbling. Many people have to be humbled to now receive new information. And what I mean by that is if I want to become a better fighter, I'm a professional fighter. I live at, I live to stay and train at one of the number one gyms in the country. For me to become a better fighter, I have to humble myself and go, I can get better. I can become more. I have to humble myself to receive more information. Now, a lot of people that did this, they're going, wait a minute, these poten- these people potentially lied to me? This didn't pass safety standards? They were so emotional, so ready to cancel, so ready to say, hey, if you don't do this, you're not protecting me. Well, now it looks like some of these people have to be humbled. And I don't hold anything against these people that tried to attack me or tried to attack anybody. I forgive them. I forgive them. That's because I'm in my heart space. That's because I'm in, I'm centered in love and unconditional love. And I realize people can make mistakes. That is the example of what, Jesus? Exactly. And so they want to say, no, if you do this, you're done. You're wrong. Where does that sound like it's coming from? That sounds to me like it's coming from a place that is not for humanity. And why for me, it's easy to see who the opposition is. For years, that we'll go back to schooling as a kid. And then a lot of history books have been debunked as lies and 
I, I'm at a stage in my life where I question everything now. I question my own methods. I question my own beliefs. Like, as human beings, Joe, what what do you actually believe we are on earth for? On question. I believe that we are all here to grow into our best selves, which in turn will give back to humanity. Meaning, energy is everything. We are all energy. There's something called oscillation and entrainment. It's how it's how computers work. It's how pretty much everything works. Works. Oscillation is where one frequency uh, starts spinning and then oscillates. Right? It's spinning. And then entrainment is where two frequencies spin at the same time. So what I mean by that is when, have you ever seen, uh, like if we use sports, for example, what's your favorite sport? Uh, football, which is soccer in America. Okay. So soccer, right? You see when someone's on a breakaway, everybody in the stand, somebody's on a breakaway, you know that there's a potential that this dude is going to score, right? We know that this guy might score. So everybody does what? Oh. And you know that that guy down there is also getting excited. He's about to put the ball in the net. You can see the goalie over there. He's getting ready. He's getting ready to defend it. And everybody's excitement is doing what? This. Rising. Everybody is oscillating and then entraining to said frequency. And when he scores, whoa, everybody gets to enjoy that entrainment. Everybody's spinning at the same frequency. It's why jokes work. Everybody laughs at the same time about an idea that came from one person. You have a mic. I have a mic. Somebody had to create this. And now we are essentially in training to the frequency where you said somewhere in your life, I need this mic so I can do what I'm doing. And now here we are, however many, however long ago it was that you got that mic, now we're able to use it to do what we're doing now. You entrained to that idea. I believe we are on earth to become our best selves because whoever made this mic, whoever made that mic had to become their best self in some way, shape or form, or had to become more to gain knowledge, to be able to apply it, to give us this thing that is now making our quality of life better in some way, shape or form. People are able to hear me a certain way. They're able to watch me a certain way. The cameras and the lights and all this stuff. They're able to oscillate and now entrain to my frequency. That's how women, women, alpha women will have their best friends and train to their period cycle. They were all, the alpha woman normally changes all of her friends' period cycle to hers because her energy is the highest. So when we become our best selves and when we continue to choose growth and when we continue to live in unconditional love, and I feel like this is the example of every, whether you want to call them ascended masters or, you know, like, like Jesus, Buddha, whatever, they're examples of possibility. My dream and my, my mantra is, may I be an example of possibility and may I have everything so I can give it all back because I realized that the universe, and I realize now that the universe is all give and receive. And so you, James, you inspire me. And as you inspire me, I want to become better. I want to do this better. I listen to Dave Chappelle and I go, oh man, his delivery is so, uh, I want to be better. We're here to inspire one another to become the best that we can be to give back to humanity. And that's how we ascend. That's what I believe what we're do, here for. What do you believe in different dimensions? I believe that we are on the, the, I believe we're on the 4D right now. That's why things instantaneously manifest. I, I feel like we're off of the, we're already off of the 3D. The 3D is this. The 3D is this. The 3D is this. The 4D is this. We instantaneously manifest based off of this and what we feel out into the world. So I feel like we're on the 4D going into the 5D. And that's why things like, I don't know if you saw that, I think it was Sky News reported on this demon thing that uh, that this woman caught on her camera talking to her baby or whatever. Now this all could be whatever. But at the same time, I believe like, I believe all of this exists. 
So whether it's like a vampire or a werewolf or a demon or an alien or whatever, they're, in my opinion, higher dimensional beings. And now they're starting to what? Disclose them. Why? Because they can't hide them anymore because we've already shifted into the fourth and the fifth dimension. Henceforth, why we're having a conversation, bro. Do you realize last year, at the beginning of this year, I said I was about to take over everything? That was my mantra. Literally, I was going to take over everything. I told myself I wanted to be on InfoWars by the end of the year. I did it. I've already done it three times, and we still have two months, two months to the year left, and I'm not even done. Mm -hmm. It's all about are you in alignment energetically? Are you in alignment to live your truth? Are you in alignment energetically to receive what it is that you are? And what are you? <laughs> your life will reflect that. Your life is a reflection of your thoughts and what you feel. So I feel like I'm finally worthy to receive everything that I am. I've had, I just told you I had money before, lost it. I just told you I was speaking and traveling and seeing the world, lost it. Why? Because I wasn't energetically ready to hold on to it. Now I am what I am to be all that I am so that I can receive and give back to humanity. What do you think clouds? Your energy clouds your judgment. Do you think it's alcohol, drugs, what you consume with your mind, TVs? Like a lot of people might not understand that. A lot of people know about the law of attraction now. They know about synchronicity. But a lot of people think they can just visualize something and it comes into existence. But it takes a lot more than that. Like you say, it's raising your vibration. It's raising your frequency to believe in it. Like what do you think clouds that judgment and clouds the uncertainty of making you believe what you actually believe to come true fear and insecurity it's all about they the, the everything media everything that you see on the media is to either make you feel fear shame or insecure and all of that is all the, all that just boils down into fear the first thing that Adam and Eve felt in the garden after the fall when they ate from the tree of knowledge because they were already perfect beings essentially God was like, wait a minute, why did you eat from the tree? He shows his face to Adam and Eve and they do what? Oh, they cover themselves because they're naked. He's like, what are you guys doing? Why are you covering yourselves? And they're like, ah, uh, they don't know what to say. And God's like, uh, you ate from the tree, didn't you? You know you're naked. You're a perfect being. Why did you do that? You feel shame now. You know what shame is. I didn't want you to feel shame. I didn't want you to feel fear. But now you do. And now you've fallen you have fallen to the level of the third dimension. Okay, so that's where you're going to exist now. You had everything. I gave you everything. Unconditional love, joy, bliss, pleasure, euphoria. And you chose to feel fear, shame, and insecurity. That's what the devil, or that's what opposition, or that is what people who are not for humanity want you to feel. Because that is what lowers your vibration. It's not the bad food. Hear me out. My spiritual mentor told me this. And I think Wim Hof, I think we have so many examples of so many people doing incredible things and proving that the third dimension doesn't really exist. It's literally our thoughts and what we feel. How does Wim Hof climb Mount Everest in his shorts? Well, he has to believe that he can. What if the world, hear me out, what if the world was what you believed and what you felt? what you believed you could do, what you believed you could experience. So if I eat this chocolate cake and I go, and she, and my spiritual mentor would say, Joel, you could eat chocolate cake every day if you want, if you believe that it was the most nutritious meal of the day. There's people that live to 105 and they've smoked cigarettes for the last 50, 60 years. And essentially they go and the doctor says, yeah, you're actually really healthy. You know, there's people that chew tobacco and do all these, why? I believe it's because of their beliefs and they don't feel shame when they do this. So when some people eat the chocolate cake, they feel shame afterwards. Like hey, I shouldn't be eating this. Oh, I shouldn't be eating this. Why are you eating something? And you say to yourself, oh, I shouldn't be eating this. I should. What are you doing? What are you creating in your mind? What are you allowing? You're allowing yourself to immediately feel shame. So then after you eat it, you, you, you sit back and you sulk and you're like, oh man, I feel like shit. You're saying that. You're saying you feel if everything is, again, if everything is what you believe, you're saying you feel like shit. When 
What if I ate this and I went, oh, this is the most nutritious meal of the day. Auto-suggestion, auto-suggestion, auto-suggestion. Emil Kuwe, my favorite book, one of my favorite books of all time. Emil Kuwe, Mastery of Self Through Conscious Auto-Suggestion. Emil Kuwe has proven the power of the subconscious mind by Joe Murphy has proven. David Icke, Wim Hof, all these people have proven, in my opinion, that beliefs create reality. And for me, Anything that makes me feel shame, fear, worry, doubt is a lie straight from the pits of whatever you want to consider hell. And I think that is the issue. I think that's what does it. The alcohol, I've, I know some alcohol, I know some people who drink alcohol like myself that it only makes me feel happy, but I don't drink alcohol. Why? Because I know that the illusion, I know within the illusion that it also does lower your frequency. Al cool, al cool is the spirit is the is the spirit of that. If you don't know what al cool is, go figure that out. Uh, I just don't like to play with that energy, right? And I believe we have <coughs> things that <laughs> that come from the earth that are much more beneficial. We're supposed to partake in the earth. That's why God gave it to us. So not say not to say that we shouldn't partake in alcohol or whatever. But again, a lot of people don't already have the self-control. They participate in the alcohol and they're already low vibrational. They're already low vibrational. You're already, we talked about oscillation and entrainment. You're already oscillating at a frequency that's low. And now you want to lower it some more. (laughs) Of course, you're going to be depressed. Of course, you're going to feel like shit. Of course, you're not going to manifest reality the way you want to. Because you just lowered your vibration more. That's why we have so many people running around doing dumb shit not knowing who they are, not knowing what they feel because they're vibrating at a space. And then they're also not, I also feel it's when we have, I was just talking to this girl uh, not yesterday or two days ago. And she says, I have anxiety. And I go, okay, I don't necessarily believe in that. You can believe in that and that's fine. And everybody else can believe in that. We all have our own beliefs. Some people believe in Jesus. Some people don't. Some people believe in Muhammad. Some people don't. Some people believe in genies and dragons and witches. Some people don't. That's cool. I personally don't believe in anxiety. Why? Because it takes power away from me. I believe that it's all energy. And I believe people feel, because guess what? I used to feel anxious or whatever that is. I feel like it's a label. I feel like they try to put labels on energy to then make people create mental constructs in their mind to make them feel fear, shame, worry, and doubt. Oh, I have anxiety. Does that make you feel good when you say that? Oh. Does that make you feel good? No. But what if you said, man, I have all this energy, but what am I doing about it? So I started talking to her. I said, so why do you feel like you have anxiety? Well, she says, sometimes I just don't know what to do. I said, have you ever not done something you wanted to? And she's like, yeah. And I says, well, tell me about it. She's like, well, I started this YouTube channel and I just kind of let it go. I said, What if that energy that you're feeling was you trying to get you to create more? Because I know I hated myself when I wasn't expressing myself how I wanted to. I know I hated myself when I wasn't doing all the things that I wanted to do at the level that I wanted to be doing it. So what if it was just you not following through on what your heart or your being was calling to do and it was making you feel all that stuff? Because guess what? I don't really feel anxious anymore. I don't really feel anxiety anymore. You want to know why? Because every day I try to, I, I focus on putting my best foot forward and doing all that I can with the day that I have to give back to not only myself, but to give back to my children and my family and humanity. I'm putting it all forth to receive what I believe that I should have. And now I'm receiving it. Now I'm receiving what I, what I always wanted to believe. I have people who following me who I was like, yeah, someday I'm sure I'll, I'll connect with them. So, you know, I just got to keep working someday. I'm sure I'm having a, we're having a conversation, James, because again, I remain focused. I block out the illusion and I focus on what this tells me, what these tell me. That's the point. I feel like all of the other shit is just to make people feel shame, fear, and insecurity. And when you realize that everything is energy and you stop putting labels on things, you free yourself. Yeah, uh, you went viral again after one of your MMA fights. You had the leather vest on, and you shouted out some of the biggest names in Hollywood, exposing them as pedophiles. And rightly so. We're talking about the flight logs from Epstein Island. Why has it never been released? A lot of big names on that. But you came to the forefront. You done it live TV, and everybody was talking about it. 
what was going through your mind when you decided, fuck this, that like, I'm going to make a stand and try and get some answers that everybody wants to know? Well, I mean, it was a setup from the beginning. So I broke the internet. <clears throat> I broke the internet in May for telling people about, uh, uh, I said, long story short, I, I got on the mic. I want to fight. And I said, hey, I'm about to launch this NFT that's going to change the fight game. Little did anybody know we were actually going to do that. And we put in a bunch of time to now create a platform that's going to give fighters and performers the exclusive rights to the intellectual property of their performances. So that was the first thing we said. I said, I fight to eradicate childhood malnutrition from the planet. It was a setup. I said, these two things, one's promo another's promo. And then I said, yeah, the only reason I lost my last fight is because I, I was exhausted and I had two herpes outbreaks. Wait a minute. So I talked about two really good things. I talked about, you know, an NFT project. I talked about eradicating malnutrition and that's why I fight because my company, that's what we do. We've, we've nourished over, we sent over 42 million servings of nourishment in the last three and a half years since we've been doing this buy one nurse two program. So I, that incredible life changing technology that I told you about, every time you take our products, bro, and you get healthy and you biohack the body with all natural food technology, we nourish a child. We nourish the children with that same life changing technology. It's incredible. And we've already proven the model. And then I talk about herpes and what does everybody do? They didn't even know I was talking about a cold sore, <laughs> but the media runs with it and tries to tell everybody, oh, he has genital herpes. It sounds like they're trying to discredit me. It sounds to me, it looked like it was a big media push to go, ha, this guy's crazy. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Why would you listen to him? Ah, gotcha, bitch. Now you're exposed. That was too easy. Because now it's nothing for me to come on here and say, hey, that was a setup. You didn't, you, did, you talked about genital herpes, but you didn't talk about, and Jimmy Kimmel was one of them. They didn't want to talk about eradicating malnutrition. They didn't want to talk about helping children, but they wanted to run with a dumbass story like that. You exposed yourselves. This is 5D chess. We just talked about, you know, realities and stuff. I'm playing on the 5D. I knew this was going to, I was telling Coach Wink after it, Coach Wink, watch what happens this next fight. I'm going to break the internet again. They have no idea what they just did. They opened up the floodgates. They opened up the floodgates. So the whole leather represents me dominating the media. I'm King Bao, right? No, I'm King Dom. I dominate the media. I dominate Hollywood. I'm more entertaining than anybody in Hollywood. I've proven that over the Jimmy Kimmel Challenge. Over the Jimmy Kimmel Challenge, I called out the media in Hollywood. I gave Jimmy Kimmel 46 days to respond. I said he would respond in 46 days. On day 46, I went out to Jimmy Kimmel Studio. And we shot day 46 out there. The recap video that everybody's going crazy for. If you haven't seen it, it's pinned at the top of my Instagram. But in 46 days, I show people I can create content every day that's so much more entertaining than any of these Hollywood fucks or slime. I proved it. I made three different songs <laughs> in the span of day, a day with each song that everybody went crazy for. Um, the, the Jimmy Kimmel challenge hashtag, even as they took away my, 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 inst my TikTok with 54,000 followers in 46 days, right around 50, 50, 60 days, we had over 3 million views on that hashtag. So in a month and a half, 3 million views. And all I did was post content every single day. They can't fuck with me. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to prove. I'm King bow, bow. They can't fuck with me. What happened after you done that and started shouting out Jimmy Kimmel and Hollywood elites? Like, was there a, a was it all positive or was there a negative reaction from? How can you be negative? That's the thing. I've been posting for the last three and a half years, James. And it's funny because when I first started posting, I told you about like, you know, when I was calling out the whole George Floyd shit and, you know, saying, mm -hmm. hey, I'm in Minnesota right now. I'm telling you guys, don't do this. This is what it's going to happen. I was getting a lot of backlash. I was getting a lot of backlash in the beginning from a lot of different people saying, hey, you probably shouldn't touch this topic. No, I'm going to touch this topic. Shut the fuck up. It's easy to see. You're just dumb. You're, I'll, I'll be proven right. I'll be proven right. Don't worry. It'll make sense. Three and a half years later, nobody has anything to say. If you go look at my comments, if you go look at my comments on IG or TikTok or anything, I only ever have about one or two negative comments on any of my posts. You want to know why? Because I've been proven, I've proven to the world. I am inarguable. You can't argue with me because I'm coming from a space of what? Unconditional love. I see through the bullshit. 
I see truth and I speak it. That's why people respect it. Why the fuck don't we know who Ghislaine Maxwell and Epstein traffic children to? That don't make any sense. She got fucking sentenced and we don't have any idea who the fuck is on the list. What are we talking about? That's insane. That's insanity. And some of these people might be in our government. Nah, they're not ruling over me. Fuck you. You don't get to call me a domestic terrorist, especially after you closed businesses for the last three and a half years to tell us it was all bullshit. The fucking, the, she, she admitted in court. The Pfizer person admitted in court. The woman goes, yeah, we had no idea. We had no idea if this actually stopped transmission. You sold that to people. And now people might might potentially be having health issues because of that and maybe dropping you know what so fuck you i've only been for humanity that's why nobody talks shit to me anymore because they can't because they see the mind you really want to have an intellectual war with me do you really want to go there i just proved that jimmy kim on hollywood and the mainstream media and in, in the last two months have not been able to fuck with me they can't fuck with me that's why everybody's on the bandwagon now. Everybody goes, wow, he's actually really entertaining. Wow, he's actually really well thought out. When everybody was trying to make fun of me six months ago or however, five months ago for the herpes thing. Oh, he should have just said he had herpes. Did it? it was a setup, assholes. You've been listening to the mainstream media for how long? They've been lying to you for years. I haven't watched any of that garbage in fucking six, seven years. I, haven't, I've, I got rid of the TV. I have no TV in here. I have no TV. Yeah, that's the hard thing about coming to the forefront about certain topics. Guys like David Dyke who done it 30 years ago, they laughed at him on mainstream media, called him crazy. Whether you believe his views or not, like, you've got to have some understanding that they could be potentially right. Same as Wim Hof, who's a good friend of mine. Scientists laughed him off, people called him crazy. Now his methods are changing the world through natural remedies, which is cold water and breathing techniques. Like 1984, the George Orwell book, like again, predicted the future. Like there's so much out there. But again, it's just when you come to the forefront, people call you crazy. People then dig up your past, dig up the dirt to then shoot you down where people don't believe you anymore. Like if you look at the Epstein stuff, like he was trafficking kids for the biggest names on the planet. Like I don't know if some of these names are 100% legit, but guys like Kevin Spacey, you've got Donald Trump, Prince Andrew interview, the Clintons, like it's a fucking weird place to be. And these people haven't just, be listen, we can all make mistakes. There's been people come in and out of my life who you'd meet for the first time and think he's a really nice guy, but it turns out we could be a fucking psychopath. Look, Jimmy Savile here, he's got photos with all the so-called celebrities. He's one of the biggest fucking pedophiles on the planet. Like, he's passed away now, but with the Epstein stuff, there's people been on his flights not just once, but 10 times, 15 times like that. You don't make a mistake like that. Some people might have been offered a free holiday or thought it was a great idea to maybe, there may be some people on those flight logs that were 100% yeah. genuine. That people make mistakes, but the majority of them are fucking wrongings. The majority of them are bad. You just need to look at their energy, look at their vibration. Look, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Prince Andrew interview. This guy is royalty. And he's sitting there saying he doesn't sweat. He's sitting there saying, oh, he doesn't do things like that. But yet he says he went to, to tell Epstein they don't want to be friends anymore while staying at his house for an extra seven days or nine days or whatever it is. You don't do that. This is the one of the biggest families on the planet. And you try to tell me these people don't get vetted. J uh, fucking... Jimmy Savo, Epstein, of course they do. They know the background checks. So if you know these background checks but still remain friends, then you, my friend, are a fucking pedophile as well. And the harsh truth is, the scary thing about humans, brother, is they're so easy manipulated as well. We forget easily. Like some people just switch on the TV and they'll forget in yesterday's news. You don't hear, you'll, you'll rather see Will Smith slapping someone on at the Oscars but the Prince Andrew fucking saga goes straight under the carpet and nobody hears about it anymore. What do you think of the whole Epstein scenario? Do you think he's dead? Do you think he's alive? Suicide? I don't know, I don't know if he's dead. <clears throat> I, I Hear me out. I think that Michael Jackson potentially faked his death. Mm -hmm. So if, if Michael Jackson and, you know, they say there's a lot of people that they say that the good die young. 
And there's all alter there's alternate theories that, you know, they have enough money or they get to enough influence where they just don't want to participate in society anymore. I mean, there there's been underground. We don't know some of the people you and I don't know some of the people who run the underground. They'd go out every single day into the real world. But under it, but they live in the underground. You understand that that that, that happens all the time. I don't know the biggest, I don't know who the biggest uh, Mexican cartel warlord is right now. I have no idea who that, who that man is, but he exists. So who's to say, who's to say when you got this type of money, when you're dealing with these type of people, whether it's, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell, Mossad type shit, whether it's Robert Maxwell, you know, CIA, CIA shit, like. That's a part of the reason I never got into the, the never got into the military. I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. I wanted to be a Green Beret. I wanted to be one of the baddest men on the planet, you know, doing all the kicking indoors and all that shit. But then something in me when I was a kid and my dad was always in my ear, he's like, bro, you don't want those jobs. And I said, well, why not? He's like, well, they're just going to find a way to make you disappear in the end after you learn too much. And I was just like, oh, I mean, think about it. Think about it. How many people, you know, the, the fact that we have to say things like I just did a video on this the other day, how we even have to say things like, hey, I might get suicided for this. Hey, I might get I might I might get killed for speaking. The, what the fuck kind of world do we live in where we got to be afraid of evil people potentially doing bad things to us for speaking the truth? Nah, suck my dick. I ain't participating in that reality anymore. I'm done with that. Uh -uh, I'm, I, I refuse to live in a world like that. I refuse to allow something or someone like Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton don't scare me. You want to know why? Because the people doing her dirty work, if that if they are, if it's a, it let, alleged dirty work, like the click, like the fact that we can say getting Clinton over here when we say getting Clinton, that means you suicided yourself, <laughs> right? The fact that that's even out in consciousness and people are afraid of these people. No, I fear no one. I fear nothing. Have those people try to Epstein me. Try to Epstein me. I want whoever they sent to Epstein, Epstein, if that's real, if that's a real story, if that's a real story, if that bring them, bring them all, bring who's ever doing the suicide shit. Try, try, try do that. Try doing that to me. <laughs> I said, you see how excited i get i would love to die a warrior but i'm not gonna die i believe we transcended the matrix already i believe that we are bringing christ consciousness into the now and why we shouldn't be scared that's why these people are panicking and they're trying to bring what the antichrist the devil satan whatever you want to call it. they're trying to bring that into reality right now this is the grounds of a spiritual warfare, and there's no time to be afraid of anything. So I don't know if Epstein is alive or dead. All I know is that we win in the end. Humanity wins in the end. Light wins in the end. Love wins in the end. And these people's time is up. That's why I'm here. That's why I, you asked me, why do I believe? Why do I believe we're on earth for this moment, for this pivotal moment in consciousness to usher in peace, to usher in a new world? full of love and the vibrations of fearlessness and compassion and giving back to your neighbor and seeing how much abundance we create could create. We can have abundance right now. If Jeffrey Epstein can have islands doing negative, nasty, dirty shit, and all these people like Bill Gates and all these Pfizer and all these people can make billions off of doing dirty shit, how much fucking money or abundance is out there for the good shit? That's why I know my company is worth a billion dollars. It's going to be a bit multi-billion dollar company. We're going to do it by helping people. Oh, oh, speaking of, did you see that the FDA is now trying to shut down natural supplements? Oh, the FDA is trying to shut down natural supplements from the earth. Oh, so if it's a chemical, you can buy it. But if it's natural from the earth, you can't fucking partake it in anymore. Nah, that's fuck. Shut the fuck up. Suck my dick. Shut the fuck up. We see through it. We see through it. You're done. It's done. Shut the fuck up. If you're not about humanity, if you're not about truth, if you're not about helping others and giving back to your fellow neighbor, you're done. We don't give a shit anymore. I will lead the charge. I don't give a fuck. We're done with that. I know how many people I've helped on my product line. 
I've seen the lives changed. I know it comes from food. I know it's just food technology. I know there's no artificial flavors, chemical sweeteners, or bullshit in it. That's why it works the way it does. Because the body knows what to do with it. We have everything that we need on the planet to be abundant now. We got to stop letting yeah. motherfuckers control us. What do you think of Kanye West now? How do you think he's coping with life? Oh, shit. <laughs> I had to ask about Kanye. That's great. Uh, so hear me out. I think that Kanye West is doing the best with what he has. I bought his first album, The College Dropout. It's one of my favorite albums back in the day. I, you know, I bought, uh, you know, I remember when he, Jesus walks, guys, show me your way because the devil trying to break me down. But then here's what happened, man. Uh, money, fame. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, you're such a fucking hoe. I love it. Okay. So we went from Jesus walks to a couple years later, you are saying you're such a fucking hoe. And Hey, I've been corrupted too. When I had money. When I had money, I fucked around a lot. I never went to strip clubs or anything like that. I never did any fucking illegal drugs, but I had time freedom and money freedom. And I definitely was promiscuous. I definitely participated. I had to, though, to realize my own divine nature. I now respect the divine feminine way more than I ever have. I, we- I respect my divine masculine nature way more now i only participate in energy that i believe worthy now i had to go through what i did kanye west had to go through what he did to have the awakening that he's having now and he's pulling himself out of in my opinion a lot of programming but for me how he's doing it he's going back to jesus and i'm not saying again i don't, i'm not saying i don't believe in jesus i grew up in the church i believe that everything is energy, that the universe is all energy and that these beings did exist. I keep talking about Christ consciousness, right? I keep talking about it, but I believe how he ran back to Jesus. It was almost like shame. You know, again, he felt shame for, for what he did. I look at everything that I did have done in my life and I'm grateful for it. I don't sit and and look at my life and hate myself for anything anymore. I've forgiven myself for all those things. I feel like this is how he's trying to talk himself into forgiving himself by going on and, you know, saying and having all these interviews, you know, he's a Gemini too. I know how our minds work. Our minds are right. It's all over the place. I get it. But as I'm listening to him, as I understand him for, for how I understand myself, I just hear a man that is back on his almost he's like he's trying to regain his righteousness and if i would sit down with him i would say kanye you're already righteous you're already you're already forgiven you're already of unconditional love just stay there just you don't have to prove anything anymore i i I, i'm at peace with where i am brother and we can do this because i am grateful for Everything that I've gone through to get to where I'm at is here, here, here. I can be at peace while I'm talking to you. When he's doing these interviews, a lot of the time, I don't see a man that's at peace. And I, again, I think he's doing the best with what he has. And I could be wrong. He could be at peace. I mean, he could, he, he, he could be at peace. I just would say, Kanye, just do what, uh, just be what you are that got you to be what you are. What do you think uh, pizza get? Oh, Pizzagate is for sure. I mean, you know, it's a right wing conspiracy. <laughs> uh, fucking, you know, I mean, Jesus. Jimmy Kimmel comes out with Crocs that are pizza flavored. You know, all these people, they almost like laugh at people. They laugh at, you know, everybody in their face. Right. I think that's what it is. I think it's the same nuance that I use in my comedy and my skits. And, you know, I think they, I think the, the uh, opposition of humanity does the same exact thing. I think they, you know, they they throw it out in your face and they laugh at you. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Same thing. What do I do? Look at me. I have a shirt called Uncancelable, right? I'm using the same technology. I'm using the same technique. What the fuck are you going to do? I'm here now. Jimmy Jimmy comes out with cro- pizza Crocs, pizza underwear. I think they do I, the same thing. Yeah. How bad, how bad and dark is Hollywood, Joe? Is it so dark that 
people will be shocked if the truth actually came out or is it just or we haven't even scratched the surface of how dark and evil this is because they talk about people selling their soul and uh, I, I do believe people do sell their soul in some degree with like you say Kanye West they came out flowing with the Jesus stuff and then you kind of forget yourself with the money and fame it takes you to a whole different dimension and frequency but how dark is Hollywood with the pedophile stuff like how corrupt is it I think that, uh, so when I was out in LA, I, I went to LA for the last day of the Jimmy Kimmel challenge. Brother, when I was out in LA and I went to downtown LA specifically, it, the energy was terrible. They were doing the Hollywood, uh, excuse me, they were doing um, the Halloween premiere right across the street. Jimmy Kimmel shoots at the Masonic Lodge, you know, in downtown LA. And I'm in downtown and I just, I feel like I'm, I, t- I made the joke. I felt like I was walking on dead baby bones. I felt like I, as a, as a, as an into it, as someone that is into energy and does energy work and energy, you know, practices and whatnot, I felt fucking uncomfortable. It didn't feel good. I actually got the content and I had to get the fuck out of it. I was going to stay longer. I was going to do, I was going to stay out there longer and troll Jimmy, but I was just like, the energy is so terrible out here. I don't even, I don't even want to be here. So if I felt that, I can only imagine how deep and how dark the rabbit hole actually is, especially when you have people like Ali Carter speaking out, you know, and saying that there's underground roads. She was trafficked and you got all these people coming out talking about underground this and underground that. And we already know that the military has underground bases, um, you know, especially like at the Denver underneath the Denver airport, like all this information. And I live in Albuquerque. I live in New Mexico. Talk about area 51. Bob Lazar fucking used to work at Los Alamos, Albuquerque. And if you drive out there, you feel the energy out there too. It's very serene. It's very peaceful, but it does still have a little bit of eerie nature to it. And a lot of people think that there's underground bases in the mountains. So, you know, I think that the world is now ready for the information. I feel like enough people are getting humbled. I mean, again, if you, if you bought the propaganda, if you brought the propaganda, you know how many people I know that are saying, man, I wish I didn't do it, man. I wish I didn't do it. What does that sound like? Sounds like they've been humbled. Sounds like they were, you know, you understand? I haven't heard anybody really say, Hey, I would do it again. Hey, I would do it again. And for the ones I had, I had seen a woman, I saw a video of a woman talking about it. And then she's like, yeah, if I had to do it all over again, she had the fucking, her face was all messed up from, you know what? Mm-hmm. Doing this thing, she can only talk like this. And she said, I'd do it again. Well, lo and behold, that woman passed. So uh, I feel like the humanity is, I feel like if that can happen, if that type of darkness and this type of experiment can happen right in front of you, and you have enough people now saying, hey, I'm done participating in this. I see that this is all bullshit. I think we're ready for the worst. I think that's yeah. the point. I think World War, everybody's talking about World War Three. World War Three is only going to happen if we allow it to happen because of these people in these positions of power who are orchestrating all this bullshit to, to allow it to happen. And they're only going to allow it to happen to make more money, in my opinion, because that's what wars are all about, is money. No, yeah. no. The lockdown stuff was scary. I was still doing hill walks. I was climbing mountains. I was doing my cold water therapy. And I used to post photos. But because you get so much shit from it, from the people who are drilled with fear, I understand that they are scared also. And I ain't a scientist or a doctor, but I do have good intuition. I do have good energy. But sometimes I did question my own methods. What if I was wrong? And then that's the fucking horrible part because you feel as if you get backed into a corner, you start questioning your own methods. And thankfully, I've stood my ground and things have passed and more people are waking up. But we ain't experimenters. We, as, as human beings, we should be on this planet as happy as we can be, living life as free as we can be. And we talk about freedom, but we're still caught up in a game. We're still caught up in a matrix, even with technology and phones and trying to be the best versions that we are like, it's scary that like, human beings shouldn't be getting used, abused. Like, it shouldn't be happening. And there's suicide was on the rise, drug abuse is on the rise. Like there's so many things on the rise negatively. I'm just hoping, like you say, is a conscient shift and people can see the world a little brighter because you are Brother, in full control. It already has. It already has. Yeah. It mm-hmm. already ha- we're having this conversation. 
we're having this conversation because consciousness has shifted. You mm-hmm. reached out to me, in my opinion, and you followed me because consciousness is shifting. And I was able to see, and I was able, you follow me, I'm able to see your energy. And I go, ah, I like this guy. Consciousness has already shifted. Otherwise, we would have never connected. Yeah. It's not a hope anymore. What do you think of aliens? Do you believe in it? Absolutely. I mean, we're all extraterrestrial. How do we have all these different races? How do we have all these... You, you just think we, we, we all mutated a certain way? Or is it that we come from different places? All of the different ancient technologies and ancient, um, ancient uh, civilizations talk about us being... No, no. No, no. All of us, all the civilizations talk about us coming from a different stars and different planets and different whatever. I'm just going off of history and I'm just going off of what my mind goes would be logical. Is it more logical that these ancient civilizations like in, in like Egypt who have built the pyramids and we don't necessarily know how they did it, but they're astrologically perfect to the stars. <laughs> And there, there. Some of these statues are perfectly cut, almost as if they had laser technology. Is it more? Is it more realistic that it just it came from an advanced civilization, or is it more realistic that they ch- they were so good they had no more time to to just chisel everything perfectly that we can now pull up on a fucking computer and say, "Wow, that's perfect symmetry." Nah, bro. Nah, I think it's a lot. I think it makes a lot more sense that we come from a different place and we got information and technology from a different place. Where do you think, what do you think happens when we pass, brother? What do you think? Do you think we're balls energy? Do you believe in afterlife? Like, what's your opinion on it? I feel that they've erased history multiple times. Do you think we come back? I mean, think about it. Think about all the books, the burning of the books. How many civilizations got their books burned? How many civilizations had their history wiped out? You know, they say that history is only written by those that won the wars. What about civilizations that just got murked? What did they know? What information did they have? We see how the government censors us now. We're seeing how the government censors what we believe is truth. What we might believe is truth now. You understand? Yeah. So if if that's the case, then what the fuck do you think happened throughout history? Some people believe that the slaves revolted here in America and that's how they got free. Some people believe that there were seven different presidents before George Washington. Some of them being half black. You understand? Some people believe that. So do we really know what history is or have we been fed a story from a propaganda machine that we've never been able to question up until this point in humanity. What do you, what's your opinion on the governments? I mean, I think the government, that is their job is to suppress information, to control power. I think that's what they've done their, their, their entire existence. You understand? I think that's what, I think that's what the government has absolutely like governments. In my opinion, we could say to me, based off of my, how I've, seen them handle everything i think that governments are essentially put in place to not share information with people where does my money go where do my taxes go you don't get to know that wait what why i should know where every single one of my dollars goes that you're using to build whatever did did one did one cent of my dollar that i gave you Go into building that road. How many? How much of my money went into building that road? Oh, I don't get to know that. Why don't I get to know that? Hey, uh, what is Area Fifty One all about? Because that's a government agency, right? So if that's a government agency, what's going on in there? If my taxpayer dollars are going into that, well, what's going on there? No, you can't know. It's top secret. It's wait. I'm paying for it. We're paying you guys for that. <laughs> so so uh. Why, why don't I get to know that? See, I think the government has done that its entire existence. Now they're banning books. Now they're banning books. Now they're pushing a certain agenda. So I think that governments are set up for control, for power, 
And uh, this is why we have to create new systems. Yeah. How are you treated in the fight game, Joe? Because you're a great fighter. Is it middleweight you fight? Yep, middleweight. How do other fighters treat you with you being so at the forefront with your views on life and the world and everything that you speak about? I mean, hear me out. Hear me out. That's why I'm starting to create my own platform. Fight for you NFT, the, the fight for you NFT. Everybody go to fight for you.io fight for you.io. Check out what we're doing. Again, we're going to give fighters the intellectual exclusive rights to their performances. I don't own those interviews that I went viral for. I don't own those fights that I went viral for. You can only see those fights on UFC Fight Pass. The UFC has monopolized essentially everything. Good on Dana White and good on all, you know, the UFC, blah, 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 blah. But none of the fighters own those on that content. And at this point, it's very hard for me to get a fight. It's very hard for me to get a fight. And I think that there's a little behind the scenes. I know some people on the inside of that organization who I don't know if you know they'll know this, but when I went viral on Twitter, when I first went viral, for, I, I, UFC Fight Pass posted me and they had to take it down. They got a call from someone said, hey, you got to take this down. Well, I thought we live in a free country. I just broke the internet. <laughs> I just broke the world again, two times in less than six months. You know what I mean? Two times in less than six months. And you have to take that down? Why? Well, I had a talk with someone, let's just say, and I know why. Somebody made a call. Well, if we live in a free country, then anything should be said, right? They just partnered, the UFC just partnered up with Meta. We know what Meta has been doing. We know what Facebook has been doing the last however many, two, three years. We know that they gave a lot of money to a certain party. We know that they've put up misinformation labels on things that we've now found is not misinformation. So... I don't know if I'm going to be able to get another fight unless I do it myself, if this makes sense. Yeah. So, How hard is that for you, Joel, then, to be a fighter your whole life from not just within but externally? How hard is that for you when you, you're trying to do the best that you can, you're trying to do the rights in life, but yet people keep trying to knock you down and stop you from progressing? <sighs> I'm built for it. I'm built for it. I, I at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that's why I, I found out how to make my own music, man. I figured out how to do all this shit. I figured out what camera do I need? What lens do I need? How do I mix and master my audio? How do I record myself? How because bro, there uh, no one's gonna give me anything. I get it now. <laughs> I get it now. It, it, you know how many people have been asking for me to be in the UFC for for years now? Hey, why isn't Joe in the UFC? Hey, why isn't Joe? Somebody just fought a gentleman that I fought who was only four and two. I'm seven and two. Why am I not in the UFC? What do I have to continue to prove when they got people with lesser records than I have in the UFC right now? I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Here, I just broke the internet twice. I'm the most viral fighter of the year outside of someone like a you know a Jake Paul or a, or whatever. And you, but I'm talking, no one's done what I've done. I've, I've got, everybody wants to talk about Andrew Tate. I've got billions of views too. I was on Australia primetime TV. I had every single influencer and every single fucking, I had everybody tw um, tweeting me or, or uh, sharing my, 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 my herpy clip. After that, we broke the internet, in my opinion, bigger and above and beyond that. So that's another billion some views. How am I not in the UFC? Well, I think there's an agenda there too. I think there's a, how long can we wait until we can't ignore this gentleman here anymore? I am also, I just told you, I had a TikTok get taken away. Do you know how many videos have been going viral for me? I went, I, I've had a viral, I got a, a viral video for a, for a healing video that I did where I taught people how to instantaneously release their trauma. That was on my last TikTok. And people, thousands of people were coming on here saying, oh my gosh, these, these three minutes changed my life. Thank you so much. And da, 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 da. this was my experience. This is the trauma that I released and it actually worked. And da, da. that video was going like this and then just stopped. And they, people would comment and they would stop. They would, they would stop uh, registering the comments. I would literally have to go find new comments because the, 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 Why? Why did that video why did that video potentially get suppressed? Well then, my channel got taken down for 
misinformation with the Jimmy Kimmel Challenge. Wait, so someone that's here trying to heal humanity, giving out free game, free information, helping thousands of people for free, should be should be canceled in any regard? Tony Robbins should be canceled? David Icke should be... What? Wim Hof should be canceled? Uh, no, I think there's an agenda here. I think it's easy to fucking see. And uh, I'm annoyed. I should have been one of the biggest content creators on the face of the planet two years ago. Two years ago. They got my YouTube channel. That's when I got pissed. That's when I started to make the show. Am I canceled yet? Making fun of everything. You know how many videos I've had go viral from Am I Canceled yet? A lot of them, but they are not. They they got taken down off YouTube. They got taken down off, off Instagram. They got, bro, I've been suppressed. I've known I'm the shit. I've known what what was going to happen. It's just a matter of time. They finally gave me the perfect setup and I took it. And that's the point. No one's going to be able to cancel me. I now have my own platform. I now have people looking for me. And we've only just begun. How do you release trauma then, Joe? Like for people who's watching that's maybe in the struggle, what's your methods behind releasing trauma? I got you. I got you. So Tony Robbins ultimately became famous and well-known uh, for helping people release trauma, right? He learned neuro-linguistic programming from a gentleman named Richard Bandler, and he only got level one certified or level one trained certified. So that's the basic level. But once he understood the basic principle, he did what successful people do and apply the information. So he went on a radio show and just said, hey, I'm, I can help anybody. Da, 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 da. He put his fucking money where his mouth is. So my TikTok was showing people how neuro-linguistic programming works. And essentially, what it is, is trauma is in our body. Trauma is stored in our memories. And we can create new neural networks in our brain when we can look at whatever's making us feel a certain way differently. So for instance, if we can think of our trauma, and it's remember, it's all in our body. It's stored certain places. When you feel not so good, or you start thinking about a trauma, you feel that someplace. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to feel that, find where that feeling is, locate it, Locate it with your mind. Think about the trauma and locate it with your mind. Face it. We have to face it. And what you do is what I teach people to do is I teach them to put it to their hand. Bring that. I need you to think about it right now. And as you feel it, as it starts to become uncomfortable, bring that essence to your hand. You are now putting that trauma into your hand. And as you put that trauma into your hand, as you can feel it moving to your hand, it shows you that you have control over that trauma, over that belief. So now what I need you to do is I need you to send your love. Start feeling your love in your heart and send that from your heart to your hand. And as you start to send that from your heart to your hand and you start to imagine white light coming out of your hand and it starts to slowly dissipate. That energy, that trauma is slowly starting to release. And when you can feel the trauma gone and replaced by the love in your heart, put your hand down. That was essentially the video that I went viral for on TikTok. And how met so many people were instantaneously able to release trauma because, again, it's mind, body, spirit. You don't realize that the body holds on to things. Have you ever repeated the same mistake over and over and over and over and over again? And you wonder, why do I keep doing this? Subconscious programming. Oh, you got to get that out of your body. How do you get it out of your body? Well, how did you put it there? Mentally. <laughs> you put it there mentally. You were a kid. You didn't know. You didn't know any better. You got afraid. You felt something. You felt shame and you went, <gasps> no, Boom, get rid of it. Get rid of it and replace it with. Look, you didn't know how to do that. Now you do. What about your eating, Joe? What kind of food do you intake? Are you high proteins, carbs, fats? Like high alkaline vegan. High alkaline. I try to stay high alkaline vegan. Mostly, mostly uh, plants. Why? Because alkaline. I don't want acidity in my body. I don't want inflammation in my body. Inflammation is the root cause of every bad thing that happens in the body. So why would I want to put foods in that make me inflamed? That doesn't make any sense. Everybody says, Joel, you're always in shape. Well, it's because I had to learn diet. I had to learn diet. 
I used to eat shit. I used to eat oatmeal cream pie cereal with vitamin D milk. <laughs> with whole milk, right? I mean, like, that's what I would eat. I would eat fucking just bullshit. You understand? I think about when I was a kid. Like, if I had the same information that I had if I, when I was a kid, I would be a monster right now. I would be a fucking human specimen right now. So that's why I feel like I'm playing from a deficit. I want to see how fucking yacked I can be at the human age of 50. Because I don't believe, I believe we're not even human. But I believe that, you know, I want to see how, you know what I mean? So high alkaline uh, is is mostly what I focus on. And uh, yeah, I don't want an inflammation in my body. That doesn't fucking make any sense. You know, I hey, hear me out. Growing up, I lived on a farm. I raised chickens. I, I ate meat. I did all this stuff, right? But I also know that that creates inflammation. Isn't it interesting how when we eat meat, it creates inflammation in our bodies? And if inflammation is the root cause of everything, why would I, why would I assist my body in creating disease? That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. In any regard, in any regard, why would I assist my body in creating disease? Did you ever uh, reconnect with your mom later in years, Joe? Yep. We're, we're actually friends. We're actually good friends. I'm friends with all my birth family, um, half siblings. Yeah, we're, we're good. I met her when I was uh, 14. I told that story on my Instagram. Um, it, I did a, it's, it's one of the recent videos that I did. If you're looking, if you go find on my Instagram, it's a video of me with a red background. And I talk about how I'm sick and tired of black people targeting white people, meaning the mainstream media here in America is trying to create a race war. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to divide and conquer. They're trying to say white people are evil, white people. I was raised by white people. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Everybody loves me. Now, I got black people that love me, Indians, Mexicans, Brazilians, everybody, Chinese. I got everybody that loves me, right? And I was raised by white parents. So shut the fuck up. I'm living proof that you're bullshit. You don't get to talk anymore. If you say dumb shit, you're canceled. You don't get to talk anymore. Because you're not worthy of what you're saying. You're not worthy of the audience that you have if you're spewing bullshit. When I'm uh, the, when I'm the complete opposite example of what you're trying to perpetuate, so I yeah I just did a video like last week, um, talking about my story, how I was adopted. I show both the mothers and I you know I tell that story. But uh, yeah, we're we're great, we're great. Yeah, that's amazing, brother. That I think Morgan Freeman was asked the question, "How do you stop racism?" And I think he gave the best answer I've ever heard, and he just said, "Stop talking about it." I think like yeah. you say there, it's divide and conquer. We've got. Um, black lives matter people want white lives all lives matter that we get it but all in all we're all we're all fucking human we all bleed we all breathe we've all had bad shit done to us we've all had good shit done to us but all in all we you all have choices that comes a certain point in your life and you can go out and do what the fuck you want to do as long as you're not hurting anyone then so be it i'll support you 100 percent of the time that like, we don't all none of us ha- have it figured out me and you can talk a good game. We can talk about the things we've educated ourselves on and what we're learning. But me and you can be full of shit as well, Joe. And just, but it feels good for us. Who the fuck are we harming? Like trying to be better and trying to raise awareness and trying to guide others from not making the same mistakes. Personally, what I've done and I've made so many. I still make mistakes every day. But I tell you what, Joe, I don't fucking shy away from them. Where yep. does King Joe go from here? Where does the MMA legend go from here? Uh, we, we, we take over everything. My goal is to take over everything and give it all back. I'm not stopping until everybody knows who I am and everybody can judge my character. I want the world to judge my character, but I'm going to lead with my heart and I'm going to show people that just like you said, I haven't been perfect. Fuck, fuck no. I, there's, some, there's things that I wish I never did. There's things that I wish I could go back on, but no, I don't wish I could go back on them. I'm so grateful for all the experiences that I've had to get me to this point in time with the consciousness and the heart and the mind and the spirit that I have. I'm so grateful for all the people that walked away. I'm so grateful for all the people that I allowed to hurt me. I'm so grateful for all the experiences that I allowed to break me at one point in time, only to rebuild myself back up stronger. So what happens next is that we take over everything so we can give it all back to humanity because humanity deserves it. My children's children and your children's children deserve a better world. They deserve a better world than what we 
have. And we have the opportunity to be able to give it to them, regardless of what anybody says, regardless of what anybody feels. If they can have pedophile islands <laughs> and they can have billions of dollars going into human trafficking and bullshit and illusions and fear and hate and bullshit propaganda on the media, if they can have billions of dollars going there. They can have billions of dollars to create new systems of change that will allow humanity to flourish at the vibration that it needs to, to help all of humanity. And uh, that's what's going to happen next. You're a man who seems to be full of love, light, abundance, and try to do the right things. Say when you get into a fight, Joe, how do you make that transition to then want to hurt somebody? I hate fighting. I hate fighting. I've, I've, I've had to learn. I hear me out. I love the competition. I love fighting, but I hate it because I don't like hurting people. If I didn't have to hurt people, it would be the funnest game in the world. When I first got into fighting, a lot of people in my amateur career, I had to get over hurting people. I had to get over hitting people. My first three fights, I probably threw less than 20 punches. I didn't want to hurt people. I, and I got ridiculed for it. They said, man, you could be so good. You could be so good. Bitch, you don't know that this is a spiritual war for me. <laughs> I went my entire life without getting in a fight. You want to know why? Because I grew up worshiping and honoring the samurai. The samurai believed that if you unshielded your sword and you didn't use it, Meaning a lot of these kids nowadays, they do what? They go, I got a gun. I got it on me. I got it on me. I got a gun on me. Hey, look at what I can do. Look at what I got. You should fear me. If you did that in the samurai culture, you would have to kill yourself. You'd have to, you'd have to whip out your sword, stab yourself in the stomach, cut out your guts, and then have someone chop off your head for, for dishonoring yourself to try to get your honor back. That's how serious they took that shit. So for me, I thought fighting was always life or death. If I get in a fight on the street, I'm going to have to go to the death. I've had people spit in my face, loogies. I've had people push me, slap me, everything that you can think of. And I never put hands back on someone. You want to know why? Because in the back of my mind, I said, they're not worth killing. They're not worth doing this for. What's the consequence of my actions? I've always been somewhat self-aware to know there's going to be consequence. I could kick this dude in the face right now and end him. What happens when he hits his head on the concrete? Okay, I go to jail the rest of my life. Now I can't be a multimillionaire. Now I can't be a billionaire. Now I can't be one of the number one entertainers on the face of the planet. This has been a long time coming in the making, but now I've made peace with the idea that this is competition. And I've also made peace that I'm fighting for humanity and that if someone chooses to fight me, they're essentially saying that my mission is all is, is worthy to be that, and that my talent is worthy to be utilized. That's how I make peace with it in my mind now. So if someone signs on the dotted line against me and they want to prove that they're better than me at violence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You sign that. I can now make peace in my heart and go, okay, more opportunity to provide for humanity, more opportunity to provide for you, for, for my family, more legacy that I can instill in the world. This is honorable combat. This isn't, this isn't dishonorable combat, you know? So I still have yeah. that like, uh, you know? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think suicide so hiding out with men, Joe? Why do you think it's always been the case? Like, why do you think a lot of males are struggling at the moment? Because they don't know how to love themselves and they've been taught shame. You know, I hated myself for the longest time because I, I wasn't providing and I wasn't expressing myself at the level that I wanted to. Meaning, people ask me why I'm so, um, they say, you're such a good talker. You're such a, uh, well, uh, I had to face myself. I had to look at myself in the mirror. You know, a lot of people ask how I got into music. It was hating myself. I got made fun of by some rappers that were rapping one day. And they looked at me and they started freestyling and they started making fun of me. And everybody turned to me and they goes, hey, you're black. You can rap. Go. And I couldn't express myself. I didn't know what go meant. I didn't know how to freestyle. I didn't know how to uh, instantaneously communicate. Right. And that fucking pissed me off. And I said, never again. So I did everything in my power to learn how to communicate effectively. And one of the first things that I learned was that 
You had to face yourself. You had to grab a mirror. You had to get, grab a camera. You had to put some instrumentals on a CD or whatever. Back in the day when we used to listen to CDs, you put it in your little, I put it in my little boom box. I press play. I turn on the camera. I freestyle and you have to look at yourself in the mirror. You have to look at yourself in the eyes and you couldn't go. You couldn't stop the camera until the song was over. And then you had to go back and watch it. Do you know how many times I fucking cried? Do you know how many times I fucking yelled and screamed and broke shit? Because I couldn't look myself in the eyes and do a thing that I wanted to do. You see, I feel like that is where a lot of men are right now. They've never faced themselves down. They've never got over a hurdle for themselves to give themselves a win and go, yes. You asked, how do you, you know, how do you say your name? How do you say you want the, the whole, when my name in your mouth, whisper it because you ain't worthy to say it aloud. That was my first successful freestyle. That was my first successful freestyle. I was sitting around one day and I went, yo, when my name in your mouth, whisper it, because you ain't worthy to say it aloud. Joe Bauman. What, what was that? Huh, huh. I fucking freak out. I lose my fucking shit, bro. I lost my shit because I was starting to self-actualize my reality. I don't think enough men have felt the... Everybody listens to the Where's the List song right there. Everybody's like, where's the list, Jimmy Kimmel? What you doing, Jimmy Kimmel? Where's the list, motherfucker? Song's got millions of views now, millions of plays. The hashtag's got millions of fucking views. You want to know where that came from? At the beginning, when you hear the... (laughs) I laugh. Well, it's because when I was working on the song, I was recording it, right? I was recording myself as I was working on the song. And that's the inner child. That's me getting excited about an idea. You understand? And following through with it and knowing, knowing that I can provide. I can provide myself with the experience that I want to provide myself with. A lot of people don't have faith in themselves. A lot of men don't have faith in their ability to manifest their reality because they haven't faced their trauma. They haven't faced themselves. They haven't learned the process of breaking themselves down to love themselves. The amount of times I've cried, the amount of times I've wanted to commit suicide, I would never kill myself. I fucking love myself now. So let me put that out there. I would never kill myself. I fucking honor myself in a different way now because of everything that I've gone through. People don't know the struggles. I don't talk about them. You want to know why? I don't have fucking time to. I don't have fucking time to complain. We're in a spiritual war right now. You think that you have the time to complain and bitch and moan. You're already lost. Get out of there now. Find out how you want to honor yourself and go. Take no more time. Waste no more time. Get in the fucking gym. Start drawing. Start writing. Stop listening to the books. Stop reading the books. They all say the fucking same thing. Love yourself enough to do what you're going to do to give back to you and give back to humanity. That's all the fuck they say. The Bible said that's all all the fucking books say. Start applying the knowledge. Start going for you. And we'll watch this entire consciousness shift. Men are supposed to be men. Women are supposed to be women. What I mean by that is men are supposed to be the protectors and the providers of the world. And women are supposed to create it. We create from our desire to please the divine feminine men. To please the divine feminine. Women have a clitoris for a reason. To please a woman is everything. To protect a woman is everything. So what more of children? What more of children? Are you a man that you are happy with? If you are not a man that you're happy with, figure out why and face it. Yes, brother. What's all your social media links for people to get involved with you and back you and, or maybe ask you questions about mental health? Yeah, at underscore King Bao, at underscore K-I-N-G-B-A-U. Um, you can find me on Instagram. That's kind of my main platform right now. I'm also getting a website built. We will be posting uh, about that this week. It should be done. Uh, so you can look for that. Just stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be done with TikTok because I'm like one strike away from getting banned off my new TikTok. And uh, we're not going to allow that to happen. I'm just going to stop posting there more than likely. So yeah, follow me on Instagram. Joe, listen, brother, for coming on today and telling your story. I thoroughly enjoyed that. 
I'll support and back everything you do. Anytime you ever need me or anything I can help with, I'm only a phone call away. Would you like to finish up on anything, brother? No, man, you're awesome. You're great. I would just say don't allow fear, shame, doubt, insecurity to rule over you anymore. These people are scared. These are the people that are scared. They are projecting their reality onto us. You don't need to take someone else's projection onto you. You can say, fuck you. This is my reality. I don't want to feel that. So I'm not going to, I had to learn that. I always used to say, yes, I didn't have any boundaries. I didn't know how to say no, say no to the things that you don't want and say yes to the things that you do. Starting with the love that is in your heart for yourself. Yes, brother. Listen, again, thank you and keep doing what you're doing and I hope you get everything that you set out to get in life, brother. Like I say, always here if you need me, have an amazing day and God bless you and I'll speak to you soon, Joe. Awesome. Thank you for you, man. God bless you, brother. Take care.